This is an interesting story. Not that many uh, prisoners escape from prison in this country. In fact, I heard the Tory government defending themselves the other day, saying that under Tony Blair, ten times more people escape from prison than they have now. Um, this particular escape doesn't seem to have been very difficult to do, though, does it? Uh, no, but what you have to remember is prisoners have um, time on their hands and uh, they study uh, their surroundings mm. constantly and they're looking for weak points. Yeah. Now, I would say this guy has been pl pl plotting his escape for some time now and um, he's looked at the weather reports. Yeah. Uh, it, we're, we're in a, you know, it's, uh, we've had good weather for at least uh, 10 days. So that would make it e easy for him to survive um, in if he has gone to the park. Um, remember, he lived near that park. So as a young man, he would have undoubtedly been playing around that area and he'd probably know it quite well. Yes, that's a very good point. Actually. I hadn't really thought of that. But I mean, in terms of how you get help, because I know that you've tweeted out uh, today that um, or yesterday that your gut instinct is that he wasn't working alone. Because it would appear, and we only have kind of somebody's word for this inside the investigation, that there was some kind of strapping um, attached to the underside of this lorry, quite a big lorry, um, and obviously these lorries come in and out all the time. But if there were um, something for him to literally hang on to underneath that lorry, that would have had to have been put there beforehand, and it would have had to be quite, quite well coordinated, wouldn't it? Well, I don't know. I mean, the police will establish that fact. But remember, again, prisoners are very, um, uh, very clever at, at making things, making tools to escape. Yes. There, there, is, there is the possibility that he actually made these straps himself um, to get out uh, um, underneath that wagon. Right. What, you mean he could have actually taken them out with him, got under, yes. got, got under the yes. wagon, attached himself to it all in one move? As it were. Yes, I mean, we see this happening um, with um, uh, refugees uh, coming into the, the country yeah. under wagons. And um, so that possibility is definitely there. Mm, interesting. And I mean, obviously impossible to know why he would have wanted to escape at this time. A lot of people have said, you know, he was only on remand. He wasn't actually uh, a, a man who'd been found guilty of anything. He's now obviously, if he is caught, going to face much more severe sentencing. What possible motive do you think could have made him do something like that? Um, well, again, that asks, you have to ask the question, is he being sponsored by oh. an enemy of our state? And uh, was he helped? Um, it, Iran is being mentioned on numerous times. And, and one thing about the Iranians, they're very high on their tech. Now, that guy has had to leave that wagon. And as you well know, London has um, cameras, you know, saturated yeah. all over. So somebody will have had to have done a recce for dead spots or an area where the cameras weren't possibly working for him to move. He he's a young man, six foot two, so it's it's going to be very difficult for him to to blend in. Plus the fact he has the prison kitchen uniform yes. on, um, so he's going to stand out. And whether it's friends have helped him or an enemy of our our country. Um, that, that that remains a possibility. Yeah. So do you think that if this was choreographed, as you suggest, that he would have had a breaking off point from this lorry? He would have known where to get get off? He would have known where best to, to sort of disappear into either um, a place that he knew well uh, or into a crowd or into, you know, just a busy area of London? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that There would have been a recce done. If, if that's the case, there would have certainly been a recce and um, the areas, he'd have been given multiple areas uh, to exit that vehicle um, to make his escape. Mm. I mean, again, if he's got into the park, what you've got to remember is because he's a soldier, he understands thermal imagery and he would have known the, the police helicopter would have been up there scanning the area. So the one possibility is there's a lot of drainage systems mm. on the park and he will have got underground where he wouldn't have been picked up. Also, there is a number of houses that back onto that um, onto wooded areas. So he'll be looking for clothing, which in itself will be difficult because of the size. Yeah. Because again, every, you know, he will stand out um, in that in, in that uniform. So he's got to disguise himself. He has a water source. The weather is is very good. He'll be he'll be comfortable that way. There is a possibility if he has gone underground that he's maybe got himself stuck. Mm. So he could have entombed himself. Um, the, at the moment, there's too many um, 
variance in terms of what could happen. If he's being helped by friends, he could be in a safe house now, and all he's got to do is lie low for several weeks and then make his move. Right. And if you're running, say, from the other side, um, a search party, if you like, or if you're running the, the, the police and there's lots of different police involved, but there's about 150 of them involved, I mean, what's their kind of tactical move? What do they do? I mean, you've, you've said they've got helicopters, they'll put them up looking for thermal imagery. What else, what else will they be doing? Well, it's a, bit, it's a bit like the Raul Moat case where, you know, you've got, you'll have dog teams going out there and um, the dogs will be searching areas with, with man teams. Um, you've got to look, as I mentioned, drainage systems to see if any of them have been disturbed. Has, is he living underground? Is he living in, in maybe somebody's garden shed? Yeah. In one of these houses that back onto the woodland, certainly in the northern section of um, uh, Richmond Park. Yeah. And, is he or is he being you know is he being helped mm. um, the all you can all they can do is carry on with their procedures and then hopefully wait for him to make a move and that's where they'll catch him yeah yeah i mean it's one of those the longer presumably that it goes on the, the less likely they'll be able to track him because some people believe that he may be trying to leave the country if he was trying to leave the country um are there well established sort of underground ways of doing that well, yes, absolutely. I mean, they probably be the easiest ways to get into Ireland, get down to the south and then move from there. But again, I think the question has to be answered. What or why would a, a foreign state want to help him? What information does he have? Mm. And what, what, you know, in, in, in terms of whilst he was in the military, what did he have access to? Yeah. And that's unclear. There's also been a suggestion as well that there might have been notebooks and things in his in his cell. But presumably, if he needed those notebooks, he would have taken them with him. Well, again, if he was working in the kitchen, it's the opportunity. Um, he, he probably wouldn't want to highlight anything that was wrong on mm. the day of his escape. So everything would just be normal, and um, he would just be waiting for that vehicle to come in and then make his move. Yeah. And as I've said, you know, these pr these prisoners in themselves will will talk to prison guards, and they're taking snippets of information constantly. And, and making that escape plan. Um, and and it might just be the t like a tiny piece of information that, that will help him, you know, make that move. Mm, interesting stuff. Well, Chris, great to talk to you.